name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, for a few years now, we have been speaking much about the Synod. For a Synodal Church, Communion, Participation and Mission. And we have just concluded the first part of the Synod meeting in Rome. And it is to be continued next year. So in this time of the gap, we want to reflect the synodality in the Indian church and what are the challenges. Help us in this short reflection and assist us in our growth to think with the church. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sisters and brothers, I have taken the theme of synodality in the Indian church, challenge of the horizontal. Synodality in the Indian church and the challenge of the horizontal. We are living at a time when synods, namely a consultative meeting of bishops, are common. We have heard Synods on religious life, on youth, on Africa, on Asia, on Brazil, Amazonia, South America, etc., etc. According to Vatican II document, Christus Dominus, it had mandated the Pope to establish Synod of Bishops as a deliberative body periodically to assist him in the pastoral work. In 2021, Pope Francis called for a special vibrant issue on synodality itself. He called it for a synodal church, communion, participation and mission. No doubt, it sent out vibrations in all the dioceses of the world and bishops called for discussions with all the members of their churches, priests, religious, laymen and women, youth, single adults, etc., etc. The first session was just concluded in the month of October 2023, after a month-long discussion to be extended to a second session in the coming year, that is, in October 2024. The entire theme on synodality received wide appreciation and the expectations are very high as to how best it is going to transform the rather centralized and hierarchical church into a synodal church. The key words of communion, participation and mission have a wide range of consequences going from the vertical to the horizontal. It is in this context we ask the question, synodality in the Indian church the challenge of the horizontal. In this reflection, we pass some remarks on the Indian society and church and analyze the meaning and depth of the three key concepts, communion, participation and mission. These scriptural, theological and pastoral concepts challenge us to move from the hierarchical vertical to egalitarian and horizontal. Let us define these three concepts, brothers and sisters. First of all, communion. 
communion refers to oneness of mind and heart unity rather than uniformity amidst diversity how to achieve unity is a challenge the qualities needed for communion is the capacity to listen to one another to dialogue with one another to pray with one another and to discern the path ahead for the church the question arises that in the indian church with rural and urban parishes cultic rites being three latin syro malabar and malankara how can we foster communion praying together in the eucharist both in vernacular and in english does it create a division the indian church is emerging as a multilingual church in terms of worship so to increase the communion listening to one another and dialogue with one another are necessary steps discernment awaits us constantly because of pluralism of ethnicity and discrimination based on gender language education and rights particularly in our country it is not class and caste struggle it is simply differences arising from civil and ecclesial society going to the second point namely participation participation calls for dialogue and equality all the members of the church community should in some way involved in parish administration planning festivals and execution liturgical and sacramental preparation choir catechizing pilgrimages marriage preparations etc etc leadership can be shared with as many people as possible so financial contributions and accountability to the community is a shared responsibility both the diocesan and parish accounts can be done in a participatory style are we ready for such a participation given the hierarchical domination of the clergy over the people i have known some parishes where the laity completely supervise new constructions collection of funds execution and accountability of the expenses dialogue should normally lead to consensus on various issues the spirit of election to various jobs of the parish community will again lead to participation including the laity in the decision making processes will lead to shared responsibility the third aspect of the synodality is the mission mission is at the center of the church mission of the church is the mission of god in the circumstances of today's world the church community is crowded with socio economic political cultural and spiritual dimensions an integrated approach to the well being of the people of god is primarily the shepherding role of the bishops and priests shepherding role itself is a mission as one writer puts it the shepherd knows the sheep feeds the sheep leads the sheep 
gives his life for the sheep. Therefore, the missionary activity consists of knowledge, caring, leadership and self-sacrifice. Mission also is related to ecumenism. In the world of many churches and denominations, a synodal attitude will be ecumenism. One who is not with me is not my enemy, much less is not the enemy of Christ. Can we have an unitive attitude to other members of the churches in prayer, preaching, breaking God's word and service to the sick and the needy? Mission leads also to inter-religious dialogue. As in Fratelli Tutti, Pope Francis exhorts us to consider all as brothers and sisters. It's a challenge for the church of today in a multi-religious community to enter into the inter-religious dialogue. Mission also consists in digital contact with the people through mass media and internet and WhatsApp and YouTube and a few others. Above all, nothing is more superior to personal contacts. We become one with all the disciples of Jesus with no name and form. God's mission, Jesus' mission, mission of the apostles and mission of the church are in the same line of promoting the kingdom of God. Therefore, through communion, participation and mission, the synodal church augurs in the bringing of the kingdom of God for which Jesus gave his life on the cross. What is special and peculiar to the Indian church? In the spiritual category of the poor and the marginalized, the Anabim of Yahweh, we have in the Indian church special groups like the Dalits, tribals, women and economically marginalized and those at the periphery. There are innumerable migrants and migrant groups, refugees and internally displaced people who cry for a horizontal affirmation in a synodal church. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, 18 and 19, it's a call for recognition of their existence and rights. And Matthew 25, 31 to 46, it's a call for the hungry, the thirsty, the imprisoned and the violated to be served. In Luke 10, 25 to 37, makes the good news for us concrete in attending to those wounded on the wayside in the parable of the Good Samaritan. It's a challenge to speak of the horizontal affirmation of the poor, taking into consideration the synodal attitude. The challenge does not stop with knowledge and consciousness. It calls for action towards communion and participation. Once a poor beggar sitting outside the cathedral gate came in for Holy Communion. He was a priest begging for a personal experience in disguise. No one dared to drive him away from participating in the Holy Communion. And when he went to a nearby convent to beg for food, he was scolded and ill-treated and sent away empty. Communion with the beggar was missed. Mission to feed the hungry was misplaced. Communion with the poor, participation in their existential struggles and mission for the marginalized can become a reality only when we include the Dalits, the tribals, the migrants, and the marginalized into the synodal umbrella. Synodal church as horizontal experience is not a question of clergy and non-clergy. 
it's also a horizontal experience when all get connected in the running of the church as a praying serving and existential community in asia and india therefore the synodal church will be a reality when it moves from the ecclesial clergy to the ecclesial laity and even to the border of non christian members horizontalism of affirming everyone in the church and in humanity is possible only when we have the synodal attitude in thinking as well as in action may such a day come sooner than we realize gracious father may this synodal attitude and the challenge of horizontal attitude help us as we are still in the mold of the synodal documents discussions and actions may the spirit that guides the church through pope francis into synodality may become a reality in the indian church too this we ask trusting in the power of your son's name jesus amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen Thank you.